Welcome back to the dead ball area. With one of the most physically dominant packs in Europe and world-class backs, Toulon have developed an all-court game that has seen them top the regular season of the top 14 and record their third European Cup back-to-back. Key in the big games for Toulon has been Matt Gitto, and we're going to take a short look at his contribution in the two biggest games of Toulon's season, starting with attack. Now I'm a big fan of Gitto, and key to Toulon's attack is his ability to challenge defenders on the game line, holding back rows and fringe defenders, maintaining space. His ability to beat bigger men is second to none, and he uses speed and agility to punch it up and set targets for his pack. He's also got a fantastic passing game, but importantly, the vision to go with it. Against Stade Francais, he first uses his step to turn 3 versus 2 into a 2 versus 1, and then fires a beautiful cutout pass to release Hernandez, who chips with Drew Mitchell to score a fantastic try. But the real difference for me is his game management and decision making. He doesn't always get it right. Here he passes up an overlap for field position, overcooking his kick, but in this sequence leading into Matthew Bastereau's try against Clement, we get a glimpse of how he influences those around him. The first thing to look at is how he manipulates the Clement defence with a huge crossfield kick, turning Nakataki and pulling a bend and all the way from open right onto the touchline, completely closing off Clement's counter-attack system. It also allows Halfpenny, Bastereau and Hernandez to put pressure on the bend and going forward. From here, Toulon's defence keep Clement pinned back for a number of phases and Lopez decides enough is enough, puts it downfield to Matt Gitto, who knowing Halfpenny has dropped deep, has slotted into cover 15. Now this is pretty standard positioning for a 10, but when he gets the ball we can see he has only one attacking option, Mitchell on our right. And if we look deep there's a lot of traffic on that side, so he puts the ball up left into this area, landing it perfectly outside the 22. He probably would have been there to challenge had he not been taken out, but importantly it gives the Benderman very little in the way of options other than a chip and chase straight to Masoli. From this, too long counter-attack and work from right to left using their phases. Both Gitto and Board keep the decision making simple and the pace up with quick one-out runner passes, looking to keep the Clement defence narrow until the space opens up, which it does, and Gitto executes a nice taken pass under pressure to set Bastro on his way. It doesn't look like much, but for me that's the key. It's simple but well executed, and I like that Gitto is not trying to dominate the proceedings, happy to exist inside the team structure. Additionally, I think it flags that he picks and chooses his interventions wisely, and when he does get involved he tends to make a difference, as we can see here with him hitting the ruck and moving bodies. Gitto is often criticised for his size, but his defence is also a big tick. Yes, he's not the biggest or most aggressive of tacklers, but he compensates for that with good line speed and excellent technique. As we can see here, he gets off the line fast, accelerating the last few steps to get a good solid hit in, stopping Clement on the game line and ultimately winning a penalty. Again, here we can see another textbook tackle on Kamara, which also leads to a penalty. Good technique, coupled with that game awareness we flagged up earlier, means his defensive reading is second to none, and here we see him getting around and covering Hernandez's mistake. Another good example of his ability to read the game occurred late in the European Cup final. Chasing the game, Abendanen makes a fantastic break. But watch Gitto as he tracks back, he has choices to make as to when to intervene, and despite getting taken out by Cudmore, waits until he's needed and makes a good covering tackle. He's then up on his feet and tracking the ball, but realising the defence is getting narrow, he stops and turns and heads back to maintain a defensive width. This is really important as when Clement recycle and apply pressure, the ball comes back and Gitto now settled on the wing, shoots out and nails Rougeret, shutting down a 3 on 2. It's intelligent defence and I think we're starting to see what Gitto can offer the Wallabies set up in both attack and defence. As a coach, I admire the fact he's mixed a lot of his game time between 12 and 10 this season, and importantly, in the context of the Wallabies, he's used to playing the go-forward around-the-corner power game that Checker favours, and I think it's inevitable that we will see him in the Wallabies team, possibly at 12 alongside Cooper at 10, or 10 alongside Tamira at 12. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.